It is every employer's nightmare. The sheriff of the court arrives and is writing up their assets against a writ of execution. What must employers do if this happens to them? This is stuff employers should know. Welcome to Stuff Employers Should Know, the podcast navigating the legal complexities of South African employment and labor laws. Proudly brought to you by LaborNet, management's ultimate HR solution. Hey, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Barry Gordon Davis, and as always on the levels, producer Yasa Yas like it, Ismail. In my line of work, uh, I've had this call from many clients. Uh, the sheriff of the court has just arrived at my business and is busy writing up my assets for failing to adhere to a CCMA arbitration award that I don't even know about. So what do we do in these situations? It's a nightmare situation and it's a, a heat of the moment situation and we know most employers don't usually react kindly to it. They, <laughs> they're usually quite upset about it and um, we really want to just outline what to do when this uh, situation unfortunately might arise and to advise us on what to do in step-by-step -step dealing with such situations, we are um, joined again by attorney Samantha Walker from LaborNet. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. It's good to be back. So firstly, um, what would bring about the situation where a sheriff would arrive at a business and starts um, writing up assets as part of a writ of execution? What, what has happened to get us to this point? So if there's a warrant out, a writ of execution, whatever you want to call it, if a warrant exists, that means an award exists from the CCMA. Now, either that's been maybe a default award because you didn't know about it or you didn't attend, or an actual arbitration award where you may have lost the arbitration. And to get to that point, that means that um, uh, you know the, the sheriff wouldn't just arrive at their own accord. There would uh, be a process that was followed by the applicant in this instance. Uh, in both instances, an applicant would have to do what? 100%. So the sheriff's just not going to rock up at your offices you know, without instructions. So what essentially would happen is the employee, after getting that award, you know, whatever type of award it is, they would then get it certified at the CCMA and then get a warrant of execution issued by the CCMA and then they would instruct the sheriff on the back of that warrant. That warrant is a document that empowers the sheriff to come and attach goods at your premises. Now, a lot of... Um, employers might go and say, well, where's the authority? Surely it's only the court that can do it. How can the CCMA go and certify this award on behalf of the court? So, yes, courts have the authority to do it, but that certifying process that I spoke about in terms of Section 143, that certifies a CCMA award and gives it the same level of authority as a court order from the Labour Court. So, by doing that process, we're making it a court order, which then you can issue a warrant off the back of. So that's a very, very important point that, that employers must know, is, is that the CCMA now has the authority to go and issue such authority um, as uh, and on behalf of the Labour Court. 100%. They're given that power in the Labour Relations Act. So the sheriff arrives and hands over documents to the employer. What's the first thing that the employer should do? Calm down. Please <laughs> calm down. I know it's scary and I know Stop it's terrifying. Stop screaming at your lawyer. Please. <laughs> it somehow always happens when I'm on leave that I get these phone calls. <laughs> but yeah, first step, calm down. Um, you know, and I, I think by listening to a show like this, it's really going to inform you and to see why. Because the sheriff's not just going to come and take all your stuff today. He's there serving a warrant. All he's going to do is write up a list of your goods. So... There's obviously also goods that are exempt that he cannot write up, but he'll write up this list of goods to satisfy the debt amount. So if the debt's 10,000 rand that you know is claimed to the employee, then he's only going to write up 10,000 rand worth of goods. And the goods that he writes up are now under judicial attachment, which just means you can't sell them or get rid of them, which in, in most likely cases, unless they're writing up stock, you're not going to. So... Step one, calm down, let, let the sheriff do what he needs to do, but also get a copy of that warrant from the sheriff. That's very important. And you get that copy, you're going to want to be doing some checks and balances on it. So what, what's exactly. the, what, what should employers, uh, business owners, owners check on that? Yeah, on that? so on, attached to the warrant will be the arbitration award or default award. And in most whatever cases, led to yeah, this. whatever led to it. But in most cases, if you're surprised that he's there, it's going to be a default award that yes. you weren't aware of. Okay. So 
take that document, the warrant that will have the case number and everything on, as well as the award attached to it. I then suggest you phone the CCMA call center. Give them that case number and ask them, has an award been issued? And the reason I'm saying this is we have had cases of fraudulent awards beforehand. So rather just, uh, you know, double check that it is real. Once that has been confirmed, then you have an opportunity to take action off the back of that. Either, you know, if you owe the money, we're looking at a payment situation. If this is a surprise, we're looking at a rescission application. Now, um, part of the checks and balances, uh, I have had scenarios where employers have gone and basically thrown it back at the at the sheriff and said, well, the, the company's name is spelled incorrectly or it's listed as a PTY Limited when I'm actually only a CC. Um, what, what, are, what effect to that uh, writ does getting the details correct entail? <laughs> So first thing, don't fight with the sheriff. You never want to make an enemy of the sheriff. They can really make your life difficult, especially if they've got a warrant. So he's just acting on instructions from what the CCMA has given him. He didn't draft that warrant. That came from the CCMA. It was handed to him. So that's really not his fight. But as well, if you're going to try to fight on these technicalities, a PCY limited or something like that, you're really wasting your time. You may push this process out a couple of weeks, but it's not dead in the water. It's not going to go anywhere. They can go back to the CCMA and amend that name from a PTY Limited to a CC. And now the sheriff's back at your door and we're still facing the same scenario. So I really don't suggest trying to fight those technicalities. Rather, if this is a surprise, fight it as a rescission. You know, there are other options to you. Technicalities are really a waste of time in terms of uh, these CCMA warrants. So as you said earlier, a warning sign would be if they are loading up goods, you might be, be getting robbed. They're not there to go and load up the goods, they're there to write up the goods. So if they're starting to put things on the back of a bucky, phone the police, I would assume. 100% phone the police. Um, yeah, the first step of it is to obviously write up the asset list of what they have. That then goes back to the CCMA and the employee, and they will then instruct the sheriff to remove the goods to a safe space. This in normal course, does not happen on the same day because the CCMA must have sites of that as well as the employee to see, okay, I'm happy with these goods being attached. You know, I do think this amount is equivalent because the sheriff's also guessing. He's going, okay, this table looks like it's worth 200 rand. But sometimes those amounts are a little bit dodgy. So that's why we need to have sites of it and then instruct the sheriff to go back and remove your goods. It doesn't happen on the same day. That's what I'm saying. Step one, calm down. We have time to react. Okay, and let's talk about that reaction. So uh, you spoke about rescission application. Uh, just briefly, I know that that would be a show on its own, but just briefly, uh, what what entails, what is the timeline with regards to applying for a rescission application? So a rescission application, why we would apply for it in the first place, is that is to rescind the award, to make this award go away like it never existed Um, you have 14 days from the time you find out about the award as i said if you were surprised that the sheriff's at your property so you can only do so if you're non-party to that that means that you were not contesting it so you can't just go and rescind any award it would be one that you were not party to 100%. You didn't know about this award. You weren't there for some reason. So you would, um, you know, take your default award. You have 14 days um, in which to actually file your application from the date you became aware of the award. So it doesn't matter if the award was issued six months ago, but the employees only here now at your property. That also, it doesn't expire, um, you know, in that regard. You've got 14 days to then file an application for rescission when, when you became aware of the award. And then in that application, you would um, literally explain why you weren't there. It's show good cause. Why show you, good cause. So we need there. to explain why you weren't there. It's generally because you did not get the notice of yeah, set the, down. The details on the ap- original application were incorrect or... or or the like. You, there were many reasons many why Many reasons. Were Generally, it's the employees given your incorrect contact details to They've the CCMA. They've given a fax number, and you don't even have a fax. It's my sure. perfect, perfect <laughs> favorite. <yeah. laughs> now, um, with regards to that uh, rescission application, um, let's say, for example, as you say, the, the sheriff might come back later because they've now done that written. They want to now go and um, secure the goods. Uh, that rescission application, would that then stay the process? So... The rescission application uh, will stay the process until it's been finalized. But a very important point is when the the sheriff is there, 
get his details. You know, work with the sheriff, not against him. Get his details, particularly his email address or the email address of the, you know, whatever sheriff it is, whatever department. Get their email address, even if it's one of those info at. They, they generally respond very quickly. But then when you file your rescission application at the CCMA, serve a copy of that on the um, sheriff. There's no way dictates you have to do this, but that informs the sheriff that, hold on a moment. You're doing something about I'm it. I'm actually doing something. I'm challenging it. The sheriff is then going to back off until that rescission is either granted or not granted. If it is granted, please, again, take the rescission award and serve it on the sheriff. Otherwise, he's not going to know this matter is now persona non grata. You know, the, the warrant is invalid because the award it was issued off of no longer exists because of the rescission. Always include the sheriff um, in these sort of processes. Everyone generally forgets to. And then while they're busy rescinding the award, the sheriff comes back to attach goods. It's as simple as copy him in the mail. They'll back off. They generally do when they see a rescission. Now, there's another scenario that we spoke about, which is where, and, and, and the first one was where the employer did not actually know about the arbitration in the first place, or that the, the employer had actually then taken them to the CCMA. The other would be where they actually did contest the award, uh, sorry, did contest the, the, the actual arbitration. Um, the arbitration went against them. There's either, let's say, a reinstatement with uh, attached compensation or a compensation award. And they then either chose to ignore the award or they um, didn't actually then receive the award uh, in 14 days like the CCMA usually sends it out or for whatever reason. So now there actually is an award that says that they actually owe this. It didn't happen uh, uh, in default against them. So... Um, how how is that then different? What what do what what do they then have to do? So if you've obviously attended that arbitration and you've lost, the arbitrators ruled against you. You now owe this money, um, the back pay, the compensation, whatever it is. You have two options that are in front of you. Either you pay the amount, you pay it to the individual, or you are more than entitled to pay it to the sheriff as well. If he's there demanding payment um, for the warrant, then you can actually pay it to him into his bank account. Just keep proof of that on file. The matter goes away. You've paid. It's done. If you do not want to pay because you believe that um, you, you shouldn't have lost, for example, you then have the right to take that award on review to the labor court. Um, you have set time periods to do it. We must make sure we comply with that. But a little warning, if you take it on review, it does not suspend the operation of the arbitration award. You still have to put up guarantees. So if you just think you're going to go rush off to the, it happens all the time, um, particularly when I represent employees, I, I see it and then the company runs and files a review application. That doesn't stop me. I'm going to come at you with, with the sheriff now. Um, so then you either have two options when you're reviewing to literally request the court to to stay the warrant of execution that generally happens off the back of an urgent application so there is going to be extra costs so the easiest one is just file a security bond you know with whatever that amount is of the award you owe so let's go full circle then there is this writ it gets uh, written up um, and the employer then still fails to act on it, doesn't apply for rescission, doesn't apply for review, doesn't pay the actual amount. What then actually happens now with these items? So the CCMA is going to send the sheriff back, and when the sheriff gets back, he's coming with trucks, and he starts removing your goods. Um, it's quite a traumatizing experience uh, for my clients that have been through it. Um, you know, it, it's it's not their happiest day because literally this individual is loading things into his truck and you can do nothing. If you try interfere and stop him, he can actually have you arrested. He can call the police there as well to prevent you from interfering. So you could have a situation where, you know, you've got a lobby full of clients and they're just watching the sheriff load up your goods. Those goods will then be taken uh, to a safe place. It's generally to the sheriff's um, offices. They have storage facilities all over the place. Those goods will then be eventually auctioned off after the sheriff has followed his process. They will be auctioned off to the highest bidder. So even if you bought a desk for a thousand rand, it could potentially sell for 50 rand and sorry for you that's just the way it cuts it and that amount will then be paid to the employee if for example when they are in the auction and the debt was for 10,000 and they only make 5,000 
the employee will get that 5,000 and they're going to come back mm. to your office and take more stuff until that amount is satisfied. Nightmare situation. It's it's not fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, I think the most important takeaway is to actually do something. Um, exercise one's right. Don't ignore it because it's something that's going to come whether you like it or not. Deal with it in the appropriate manner. Get the appropriate legal advice and um, uh, get the matter sorted out. Um, thank you, Sam. Uh, it was great having you back again. It was a shorter episode, but I think one that was seriously necessary. I'm very glad to be here, and I'm glad that we're getting to discuss these tough issues because employers need to take heed. You know, if they ignore and they don't react, there's quite severe consequences that they could face. So that's it for another episode of Stuff Employers Should Know. Get in touch on social media or drop us a mail at sesk at labornet.com. Let us know if you've ever been in this situation before. Also, let us know what you think of the show and what topics you would like us to discuss. It really helps us in creating content that you really want to hear. So from myself, BGD, and yes, till the next show, thank you very much and cheers. Staff Employers Should Know was proudly brought to you by LabourNet, management's ultimate HR solution. For more episodes from Staff Employers Should Know, go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you play your favorite shows. Case law or statutes referenced in the podcast are current at the time of recording.